Thirty years after the salt iron raged across Norzelia, a vein of precious minerals was unearthed in the kingdom of Glenbrook. From east to west, joy swept the land. United at last in common cause, the kingdom of Glenbrook, the Grand Duchy of Esfrost, and the holy state of Hyzant endeavored to wrest this bounty from the earth, with each nation providing expertise and resources. This uneasy alliance between once bitter enemies will herald a new era of tranquility in this long and battled realm. One after another, dignitaries from each nation arrive in Glenbrook to solidify this accord and toast to its success, the first step on the road to peace. Among those who would forge this road is Sarah Noah Wolfford. Inheriting the title of Lord Wolfford from his father, Simon, he must decide what foundation he would lay for this new era. Welcome to Castle Wolford, Minister Lila. Allow me to express my gratitude to the Holy State. Were it not for your nation's generous efforts, this venture would never have come to fruition. You are too kind, Lord Simon. You too have served an invaluable role in this. Though I must admit, the news of the union between your son and Lady Frederica came as quite the surprise. None in Hyzant considered that a bannerman of Glenbrook would join with the ruling family of Esfrost. I hear that Lady Frederica is the Archduke's half-sister. I must ask, how did this arrangement come to be? Oh, your curiosity is only natural. This union was promised during the war, an arrangement made with the previous Archduke. Truth be told, I am surprised one as well-informed as yourself did not already know. And this is your son, as I recall. Sarah Noah Wolford, at your service, Minister. And I am Frederica Esfrost. My son still has much to learn, but I believe this marriage will herald a bright future for us all. For today, I intend to step down and leave House Wolfort in Sarah Noah's capable hands. You're abdicating your position? Surprising news comes in pairs, I see. Nonetheless, I am happy for you both. I imagine the lords and ladies at tonight's banquet will take great interest in the new Lord Wolfort, as will I. <laughs> <laughs> Go easy on the boy, my lady. I hear that young Lord Dragan of Esfrost shall also be in attendance? Indeed. He has been appointed to oversee operations at the Grand Norzellian Mines. I understand his star in Esfrost has seen a meteoric rise. Good. I would like to hear more of this new explosive substance he means to use to blast the tunnels. As a fellow scholar of sorts, if in a different field. I am always curious to learn how great discoveries are made. He should have arrived by now. Has anyone seen him? Dragan's gone to see the city. He was halfway there before the gangplank landed on the docks. Ah, he is your cousin, yes. I see we share an innate curiosity for new places. The banquet will begin soon. I shall seek him out and escort him there. Very good. Though I will host tonight's festivities, I want you to act as if you're already Lord of the House. Our guests are the most esteemed personages of their respective nations. Take care not to cause offense. Of course, Father.
I thank you for your hospitality today, Lord Saranoa. Think nothing of it. Did you enjoy the city, Lord Dragan? Quite. Its people are full of life and love for their lord. That says all I need to know about House Wolfort. You honor us with your words. I am only being frank. Frederica is the sister of the Archduke, after all, and my cousin besides. I would not see her marry into an unworthy house. Suffice to say, my expectations were exceeded. I have heard much of your ingenious contributions to the mining efforts. I sense prosperous days are ahead of us. As do I. Finally, our nations enter into an age unfettered by war. With Esfrost's iron, Hyzant's salt, and Glenbrook's mediation, there is no limit to what we can achieve. We must regard each other as equals, and forge mutually beneficial relationships. I sense skepticism in your words, Lord Dragan. Do you mean to imply our relations are not already mutually beneficial? I need not imply anything. The salt tax you claim makes my case more than clear. Bold words from one so young. Is that how peers speak to one another? Perhaps the young ones, yes. What do you think, Lord Saranoa? Dissatisfaction with the salt tax was one cause of the war, was it not? Salt is a divine boon, a gift from the goddess to her true believers. This is the foundation of the teachings that guide us in Hyzant. By allying with Esfrost, do you mean to gainsay our most fundamental beliefs? Of course not, Minister. We understand that the source is Norzelia's sole supply of salt. And we would not deny that it is the Holy State's right to harvest and tax it as you see fit. Thank you for acknowledging that. Though it strikes me that your words are measured. You needn't be so non-committal, Lord Saranoa. It is only reasonable that the three of us have differing opinions on the matter. However, that is all the more reason for us to be open to frank discussion. Hmm. Honored guests, <laughs> pray forgive my son. We of House Wolfort are but simple warriors. <laughs> I'm afraid matters of finance and politics do not come to us naturally. This, however, I can say. We will fight injustice and tyranny wheresoever it may be. Of course, we do not enjoy conflict. Still, we will not hesitate to defend our land and our people should the need arise. No matter how mighty the threat, we will fight for home and kingdom. Yes, Lord Simon. Of that we are keenly aware. I apologize if I spoke out of turn. But the fact remains that as every winter passes, the tension between our nations grows, and salt is the cause. The common folk have all but forgotten its taste. I simply want to ease their suffering. The ministry I oversee is committed to the preservation of life. I personally believe that salt should not be a luxury reserved for the privileged few. All those who live require it. Not just those lucky enough to be born within the borders of our holy state. You agree with me, then? How I feel matters little. In Hyzant, the word of the goddess, as conveyed to us from the lips of the Hierophant, is absolute. But perhaps this joint mining venture of yours may lead to the change you seek. Indeed. We must set our gazes to the future. All of us. I expect you will be the ones to usher us into a new era. Yes, Father.
father spoke not a single word to me today. Before long, I fear I might forget the sound of his voice. Please, sister, you weep and wail like a common girl. Show some composure. Father has a kingdom to rule, a kingdom engaged in a historic endeavor. He has more important duties than to pamper a spoiled child. I... yes, of course, brother. You speak as if father's duties include anything more than licking the boots of these dignitaries. It is inconceivable he cannot spare the time to break bread with his daughter. You speak out of insolence and ignorance, Roland. I speak only the truth. He leaves all the cumbersome tasks to the Wolforts and Minister Patriot. A king's word is to be obeyed. And what of his subjects? Do they exist simply to bring him glory? To take the blame for his failures? They are to serve as he sees fit. The hell they are. Believe as you wish. Speaking of his subjects, it appears Lordship of House Wolfort will be passed down to young Saranoa. What? How fortunate for you to have a friend in the new lord. Best not take loyalty for granted, however. House Wolfort is obedient enough for now, but that can change as quickly as the wind. Use them well when you can, but be ready to bring down your fist if they dare to rise above their station. Don't speak of them like lapdogs. They're not servants. They're my friends. Do you really think to lead with such a soft heart? You are not fit to wear the royal signet. Oh, stop this fighting at once. You frighten me. Enough of this. Where are you going, brother? To train with Sir Maxwell. I would clear my head. There is a tourney on the morrow, after all. wavers, my prince. Something weighs on your mind. You've always been able to see through me. It's no great feat. Your heart lies ever on your sleeve. Do I hear disapproval in your voice? Not exactly, my prince. It can be a weakness, yes, but it can also be your strength. After all, sometimes a direct strike is most effective at piercing a formidable defense. I will take those words to heart, Sir Maxwell. Thank you for today. The pleasure was mine. I expect a good fight from you tomorrow. In the final match, no doubt. I take the field with House Wolfort. Together, I have no doubt we can emerge triumphant. Ah, that would explain your improvement. Young Sarah Noah is a worthy training partner. Even so, I have no doubt you've held your own against him. Tomorrow you shall show the realm what I already know. That you are a warrior worthy of your family's legacy. Sir Maxwell, I... Sometimes I wish I wasn't a prince. Sometimes I wish I'd been born your son instead. Surely you jest, your highness. Your father is a great king, and an even greater man. It is an honor to serve him as I do. Apologies. I forget myself. I must have taken quite a blow. Anyhow, I suppose I should rest till the morrow. Be well, Sir Maxwell. It cannot be easy being the youngest prince. To have others expect nothing from you, yet still shake their heads in disapproval. But you can rise above this, my prince. Seize your chance and lay everyone's doubts to rest once and for all. <laughs> <laughs>